Puking is where the wash in the pot of the still bubbles up all the way through the column, if it has a column, through the line arm and down through the condenser. It's not something you want, so today we're going to talk about a few different ways that we can help ensure it doesn't happen for you. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is still at the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. All right guys, last week we talked about cloudy distillate coming out the spout, coming out of your still and uh, one of the reasons that that can happen is if you've had a boil over or a puke. So I promised in that video that we were going to talk about how to stop that happening for you at home. So here we are, that's what this video is about. Uh, should we get stuck in? Let's get stuck in. First of all, it is worth noting that certain different types of recipes or washes are much more prone to this than others. And the reason I say that is, uh, I don't want to turn this into a, it's not a witch hunt. You don't have to stress about this all the time. You don't have to stress about this every time. Just know that there's certain things that are more prone for this happening in. First of all, any all grain spirits, if you've done a, a full mash, chances are that that wash is going to be a, a bit more susceptible to bubbling up as it boils than most other things. Especially, especially if it does not ferment out totally dry. Rum or anything molasses based uh, is the other one that's kind of notorious for this as well. Once again, if it doesn't ferment out fairly dry, which it probably won't if you're using, uh, you know, making a big molasses wash, it's even more susceptible to it. But don't get locked into the idea that uh, all grain equals bad all the way through the process. It's only an issue for the first time you put that into the still. So if you're doing a stripping run and collecting low wines and then popping it back into the still for a spirit run later on, you're not going to have the issues in the spirit run. It's only for the first time that wash goes into the boiler. So obviously any of these tips we're going to go through, you can apply to any different type of wash. If you have had problems with it in the past or you're worried you're going to have problems with it in the future. But if you're making something that is grain based or molasses based, especially keep an eye out for it. Let's go into a little bit more detail about what's actually happening here as well. And this will probably give you a little bit more of an idea of what to look out for too. So uh, I want to talk about boiling water on the stove. If you just have a pot of water sitting on the stove and you boil it, as long as you're not literally cranking that up so the water's jumping out of the pot, the water's pretty much going to stay in the pot. You can have a tiny little bit of clearance on the top of the pot and your stove around it's going to be pretty dry. Uh, imagine if you did exactly the same thing, you had the same amount of clearance, but you had a whole lot of pasta or spuds in the pot it's a whole lot more likely to boil over. Uh, and the reason for that is in the, the straight water, uh, the bubbles form, they come to the surface and they pop. So if that popping action doesn't literally throw the water out of the pot, you're probably pretty good. Uh, water by itself doesn't form bubbles. It's got a surface tension that doesn't really allow it. As you know, if you're playing with your kid and you're trying to blow bubbles for it, doing it with water just doesn't work. <laughs> But you put something else into that pot and um, things start leaching out of it as it boils. You start changing the surface tension of the water uh, and bubbles are allowed to form and stay formed instead of just popping straight away. Over time they build up, they rise up and eventually they erupt over the top. Exactly the same thing is happening in your still. If you're boiling the wash in your pot with such vigor that literally the the, the velocity of the bubbles popping is throwing it up through your condenser. You've got, you've got other problems. But um, if you're getting the same thing happen where there's bubbles forming and more bubbles are forming underneath it and are getting pushed up through the still and eventually they overflow, you know, that's the, the puking problem that I'm talking about here. So how do we solve it? Well, it turns out that uh, the first way is exactly the same as cooking on the stove you don't fill your pot so full. Now, I know that this can be kind of a hard pill to swallow. Let's say you've got 150 litres of wash and you've got a 50 litre pot and all you want to do is run three stripping runs and be able to get onto your spirit run. I get it, I understand. I feel your pain. <laughs> but for me, uh, with my still, my setup, running it the way that I do with an all grain washer, a rum wash, I would 
ideally like to be filling that 50 litre keg to about 40 litres and even then I'm probably going to take it pretty slow at the beginning of that stripping run and then gradually turn it up over time. <clears throat> now this leads me to another point here. Uh, it can be really really helpful to have some visibility into the still uh, at the top of the pot or at the very bottom of the column. Some of you have probably heard me say or seen me show you that I'm using a sight glass at the very bottom of my column quite often. And it is the same sight glass that I use for my four inch bubble plate, but I just don't have a plate in it. I don't use a plate. It is simply there as a viewing window to see into the still. And the reason I do that is simply because if, uh, if I am pushing it a little bit, so if I'm putting more like 45 litres into that still uh, of an all grain wash or of a molasses based wash or something like that, I can literally see into the column as I'm running the still and I'll literally run it. So if this is the, the, uh, the sight glass, I'll literally run it at a speed for my stripping runs especially where I'll see the bubbles come up and then I'll turn the, the speed, the heat down until I just see them sit there <laughs> at that level. And then eventually at some point in time during the run, they'll start dropping back down and then I can crank the, the heat way back up again. People have been asking me where I got these things from, the uh, tea ferals. I found it really hard to find them here in 4-inch in New Zealand. Uh, I bought those off, I think they were off Amazon. Perhaps AliExpress, honestly I can't remember. Uh, I'll find some links and stick them in the description down below for you guys. If it works out, they will be affiliate links. So for full disclosure, know that it doesn't cost you anything, but I get a little kickback from it if you do end up buying something. Next up, we have another trick that comes straight out of the kitchen. Uh, if you're going to boil a pot of pasta, you often throw a tablespoon of oil or butter in there. Now. Uh, some people will say that this is to stop these pasta sticking to each other after you cook it. I think if you're doing it for that reason, you're kind of cooking pasta wrong uh, in my mind. <laughs> but uh, what it will do is that oil doesn't want to mix with the water. Obviously, it'll break up and you end up with like little oil droplets all over the, the surface of the water. As those bubbles form, the oil kind of hits it and it has a very different surface tension to the, the bubble that's forming and the stress of those two things interacting with each other is going to pop the bubble before it can get very big. Uh, so it is exactly the same thing, I assume, <laughs> someone check me on this and tell me if I'm right, but I'm assuming it's exactly the same thing as when you're washing the dishes and you have a nice hot clean uh, soapy sink and it's all lovely and frothy and you, you know, you can make your sand to be it out of it or whatever. And you uh, grab the, the frying pan and whack it straight into the sink without rinsing it, it's full of oil and all those bubbles disappear. That's the way I think of it anyway. That's what's going on in the still. Now, once again, you can buy specific products for these like uh, the still spirits, um, I think they call it, uh, distilling conditioner or something like that, defoaming agents. Once again, I'll pop links in the description down below. Uh, I will be perfectly honest with you guys, I don't use it. I just use a healthy sized knob of butter. Uh, people have been hitting me up about whether or not this works. It definitely works because on multiple occasions I've forgotten to do it. I'll see the foam rising up. I'll literally just take the cap off the very top of the still um, you know, throw a knob of butter down, the, literally down the, the column when it's in pot still mode and you'll see those bubbles disappear straight away. Uh, of course the next question is, does it affect the flavour? Um, I have not noticed it too yet. I've done a bunch with, I've done a bunch without and I don't perceive a difference in flavour based on it. Um, that's not a scientific approach or test by any means so maybe that's something we can look at in the future as well. How much do you use? Well, if you're using one of the products that, um, if I can find them, like I said, I'll put them in the links down below. Uh, but if you're using those, I don't know. <laughs> Follow the instructions on the back of the bottle. Uh, for, for butter or oil, I use about a tablespoon per uh, 40, 45 liters, somewhere around there. I find that works pretty well for me. What, last of all, one more thing to think about, and this one does not come from the kitchen. Well, not directly, but if you've just had a wash that is fermented, and then you take it and put it straight into your pot. Uh, like it or not, there is going to be carbon dioxide in that. If it was fermenting uh, 
anytime recently, especially, especially if the temperature has dropped significantly right when um, fermentation finished. So if you cold crashed it to clear it, or if you turned the heat off and let it drop way down, um, there's going to be a higher volume of gas in there than if you didn't do that. Uh, I know a lot of people will say, ah, but if it's not under pressure, it doesn't happen. Bollocks, don't listen to them. <laughs> it's not gonna be fully carbonated like a beer and it's not going to be carbonated to the point where you would even uh, notice it as being anything past slightly effervescent. But when you heat that up, as the temperature of the solution rises in the pot, uh, the gas is going to become less and less soluble uh, in that solution and it's going to start off-gassing. Of course, that's a whole lot of extra bubbles than what you would get if you were just boiling the liquid. So it perpetuates the cycle that we were talking about before. Uh, the trick to this is simply to off gas before you put it into the boiler. And honestly guys, I don't stress about stirring it or mixing it. When I rack it or siphon it or tip it from the fermenter into the pot, I just do it really vigorously and make sure to splash it up. And I find for me that seems to do a pretty damn good job. If I'm pushing things, if I know my pot is a little bit fuller, uh, if I know it's something that's slightly higher carbonated, if I know it's just going to be more of an issue in general, uh, what I'll do is wait until it's all into the pot, I'll let it settle for a couple of minutes, and then I'll grab a stirring stick and just give it a good, you know, like a, almost like a whisk in the pot uh, until bubbles stop coming off, and then I carry on heating up. I'm sure that I've missed something here, guys. Uh, if you can remember, oh, heat <laughs> yeah i mentioned it kind of earlier on but um the harder and faster you're driving heat into your pots the more likely this is to happen um so at the beginning of a dubious run a dubious stripping run especially when i want to crank the heat way up uh, like i said earlier on i'll keep the heat a little bit lower until you get a, a feel for it and then you can start dialing the heat up uh, or sometimes you just can't push the heat as far as you'd like to, it's just the way it is. So, like I was saying before, I'm sure there's other things, uh, other tips, other tricks that you can use to stop puking that I haven't thought of or I haven't remembered to put into this video. If you can think of something that you think is a good tip that'll uh, help people out and help stop pukes for other people, whack it in the comments down below, I would greatly appreciate that. So I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, guys. The only reason I get to make these videos is because of you, and I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate it. Uh, if you at home are finding value in these videos and you'd like to help contribute to Still It to help make sure that the channel keeps on keeping on, you can go to chasethecraft.com slash support to find out all the different ways you can help out, uh, including, if it's right for you, Patreon, of course. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope some people out there found it useful. I hope it makes people's lives easier in the future. And like I said, if you've got some other tips, whack them in the comments section down below. Uh, if you are new to distilling and this is all totally new information for you, please guys, go and check the comments out down below as well because more often than not, that uh, comment section is probably more valuable than the video itself. So thanks for everyone that contributes down there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a whole lot. And it doesn't cost you anything. Another thing that won't cost you anything is uh, to subscribe. If you like content like this and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and uh, you'll find out when I put a new video up. So thanks a bunch for hanging out, guys. I'll catch you next time. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.